so that's the nails which we are going to do today and I have just sanitized her hands and um, scratched the surface of the natural nail plate a little bit and now I'm going to clean them and apply the tips because uh, it will be a baby boomer with a bit of swirl in an almond shape clean with the brush use the nail dehydrator to dehydrate the nail plate and then we are going to apply the tips. And I will show you a great tip actually, um, how to save yourself lots of time when uh, doing an almond shaped nails on the tips. This is an extra nail dehydrator as well. I'm just applying on all of the nails. And that's the tips I'm actually using, Salon Perfections. They really fab like um, to fit any type of nails. They've got a full pocket and um, I'm always uh, cutting the pocket. So first of all, I will measure the tip and this one will be a good size. And then to get it, it fit in properly, I'm always cutting in the pocket. So someone would say like, but that doesn't make sense. Why would you cut the pocket? You could have on pocket, uh, pocket free tips. And um, I find it like for the clients Oh my goodness, first client, the glue just gone. <laughs> okay, so that's the pocket. And this way the, the nails are going to, like, I find it that they last better, even if the nails are biting. And we've got a really nice example here on this nail. And I will show you, like, how I'm applying the tip in there. So after putting the tip on, I'm waiting a couple seconds for it to stick in just so we don't get an air and then on this one she should have a size 7 let's try size 7 yep size 7 I'm just cutting this tip Slide, click, press. Don't leave the hand up because this way you will get the air. Okay. You can also see, so if this one was size 7, this one will be a size 6. That's it. I'm, th I'm not bothered like how I cut the pocket like there is no point of bothering about it We are going to blend it anyway, and I show you how quickly I blend as well now For those of you who are watching and seeing like oh my goodness. She've got disgusting cuticles <laughs> um, I'm cleaning cuticles always after I file the tips because um, by accident we don't want to like cut the client so uh, I'm always waiting uh, for leave the cuticles for a later stage so this one is a size 7 and the glue it has to be in one side other side oh, didn't work one side other side and you don't wait too long time with it also clients fingers you can see they're on top of my hand don't let them go underneath because then you get stuck with the glue okay so then this one should be a size 3 Oh, eh, yeah, it should be a size 3. That's it. And uh, the best way to pick up the sizes so you don't lose the time like on picking up the sizes is know your sizes. So I know my sizes and she's got a one size smaller nails than I do. And you can easily judge like the size of her nails like by looking at your hands and comparing it with her hands. And then, then you know what tips to take. Okay, so my next step is I would apply it on the second hand as well and then cut. What length would you like? Long, short, medium? <clears throat> medium? Medium, medium. So for the medium size, I would just cut it somewhere here. I think that's what, that's too long. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she wants kind of this length. So we have to also file the shape as well to get it nice. So I'm just going to cut the rest of them okay and now I will show you how to file it 
and blend this tip. Then I will do it on the rest of them and and yeah. And this way you will know how to do it. So I'm always protecting the client's um, fingers. I don't want to cut her. And filing the sides. We need to join the tip. Actually, I switched that off. We need to um, join the tip on the side. I also don't like when the tip goes down a little bit. So I'm just filing to get rid of that. And then filing a V-shape. So we can create a nice almond shape nails. And file always the free edge. And like I'm filing a little bit one side, other side till I'm happy. And then after that, blend the difference. So I'm going all over, just quickly all over. And now after I done it all over, one side on the top and then other side. So this way I've got my tip blended. Okay, and I'm going to do it actually on this one, show you as well. And then the rest I will do it on my own. So I'm constantly protecting her skin from any cuts. Nice V shape, get rid of this like growing down nail. Leave that up. And you always need to remember that after we apply the gel, we want to file the nails again so they become a little bit shorter. So at this stage, I'm not making them too short because uh, we have to file the final shape as well. So all the bits and pieces quickly all over. And then blend the difference. This is the most important. Sorry, I shake the camera. This is the more important part because that's why always the trouble starts. So make sure this is blended. And always try to, don't file on the line, try to catch one millimeter below the line. So this way you always file the tip and you don't file uh, the natural nails. You don't over file client's nails. Okay, so I've got two ready. I'm just going to do it on the rest of them and then come back to you. I forget I meant to show you how to apply the tip uh, on the bro like kind of broken nail so you can see it here is a wee gap and um, when you apply the form you can sculpt it perfectly like to match uh, the free edge but when you're working with the tips I'm going to just leave the wee, wee gap in there and I will just try to zoom it, it in there we are so when the pocket is there I need to keep this gap because I want the pocket to stop at the right place. I cannot put the pocket on the top of the nail because that will cause the lifting. So the pocket has to be with the free edge, which is here. We could file it more, but that's what hurt the client. So I'm not going to do that. So <laughs> that was a strong cut. So I'm just uh, going to quickly Cut the tip a little bit. And that's why I like the tips. Uh, they're actually perfect for a nails which are biting. Like, uh, that's not the worst nail I have ever done. Like, I have done it much worse ones. Um, and they last, like, no bother. Like, few weeks, no bother. So slide, put it in. And this way we have no air. If you would go on the top, then you would get the air. And also tips, they shouldn't be anything more than like a one third of the nail plate. Here is almost a half, but I still got some cuticle work to do, so. Okay. And then just wait a couple seconds before you cut it so you don't break a structure. Uh, so I'm going to do it slightly different. Instead of filing the shape, I will just do the cuticle work. So I've got my cuticle bead and I'm just going to file one side. I usually leave it at the end because sometimes it is difficult to blend this area, so I could do it with my bead as well. This is very handy. That's why I do this part after the tip is filed. And then file the other side. Okay, we can nicely lift them up. And you could either file like uh, with your bead, uh, or you could just remove the cuticle by cutting it. I'm usually cutting it and then smoothing it out with the bead. Okay, so that's my tip. I can cut it again. 
And then after that, we are going to move on into the gel application so I can put my tips on the side. And very good tip for you guys, like always make sure everything has its space, like so you don't have to search for the stuff, like you just know where it is. Okay, just quickly file that free edge all over. Okay, I'm going to dehydrate all the nail plate. Don't touch the tips because the tips um they are made out of the plastic and if you touch them with the nail dehydrator they will blend and if you overuse it they might blend even too much and they might weaken so if you're blending the tips you have to do it very very carefully so here i just need to touch up this cuticle And again, I'm not doing excessive work, just a little bit. And then I will do my final cuticle work just before the top coat application. Uh, before or gel polish, if we're doing a gel polish. Okay, now the next step is universal air bond. So quickly apply the universal air bond only on the natural nail plate. And again, don't apply the universal ray bond on the tips. It might make them to crack. And then my favorite one, the fiber gel. So I just move. And this is another tip. I don't like, like taking ages to pick up the product. So there is a weak cable and I'm always holding it here, which means I don't have to worry about holding the pots because it's just going to stop it from moving from me and the first one is a tiny thin layer so i have picked up the product on the one soft side of my brush remove the excess of it and just apply it like a nail polish make sure you cap all that free edge like you want to make sure this is everything cap and you've got the product everywhere and i'm just going to do that on all the nails and this layer is also working like on base layer so your product is going to last better the more product we apply the bigger shrinkage we've got because every gel shrinks a little bit in the lamp uh, so by doing this i'm getting a really amazing adhesion to the natural nails and say and also this wouldn't burn the clients as well because it's so nice and thin layer So just keep rubbing that in and because I'm working also with such a fine layer I can easily apply it on all five nails in a one go you can also see those white dots in here that's this leuconychia as an air pocket in between the nail, um, nail layers on the nail plate and it's usually a mechanical damage okay make sure you're capping those free edge properly change okay now because it's really warm and here today i'm just going to do probably one by one now to be safe so i have applied nice and thin layer and now i'm just going to pick up a wee bit put the client's nail down and work one side other side one side other side one side other side one side other side Change the hands. And then just swap them like and work like this. You can also warn the clients if they feel exothermic reaction, they can pull the hand out. So one side, other side, one side, other side. Change.
it is actually extremely hot so what i will do i will advise my client to put the hand inside for one second and then take it out and anytime you feel it hot just remove it okay okay change so nice and thin layer And then build up the apex. I can show you the side view as well. Change. With these two layers, I've got a perfect amount of the product around the cuticle area and on the sides. So I'm really concentrating only on building the nails. Change. And kind of when I'm working in a salon, I'm, I'm working all the time. There is no moment where I stop. So usually for a set like those type of, I book my clients like always an hour and a half. And uh, if they've got short news and we are not doing anything like, wow, um, I can take anything from 45 minutes to an hour 15, an hour and a half is really the longest. If I'm doing something special and longer nails, then I would book two hours. And for a rebalance, the quickest... The quickest I have ever done was 36 minutes. I think that was my record. That's including the gel polish application. So, but that's only on the clients of the nails. I have really no and change. And I show you a trick on the thumb as well. Especially when the temperatures are really high and you're working with the gel. Change. So the trick on the thumb is when the client puts the hand in, you have to put the thumb separately, nice and straight. I'm not bothered about it, even if it's hot. Um, I'm kind of like preventing it. So I'm not going to apply the gel to the right side because by the time it cures and by the time she puts the hand in, the gel will just run in there. and I'm just doing the last one and with the gel like the quicker you work the better to be honest you don't want to spend two hours playing with it, change. Yeah, and that's my nails like product apply. I'm just going to shape it now. Okay, so that's my right hand here. And I'm just removing the inhibition layer now. And that's the thumb as well. So by the time the hand went into there, the shape has the gel run on the entire nail. So when I'm starting filing, I go nice and straight on the side walls because I don't want bulky nails. So nice and straight, nice and straight. And you can see those lines also indicate for me is the free edge nice and straight. And it's not, it's going a little bit to the side. So this way I can correct my free edge. I also check the side view because I really don't want those kind of chicken nails. I don't know how you call it. Like, you know, those kind of nails like this. Um, I really don't like this shape. And basically, after I have done that, I'm making sure they are fluffy bits gone. After I have done that, I need to go on the side, make sure everything is blended, like there is no catchy places. So this way the nails last like basically until they grow out. 
And to be honest, that's the biggest secret. Secret, like if you've got the gap, like jump in here, they are going to catch and they are going to lift. But if you don't, then they not. And after this step, just nice and straight, nice and straight, nice and straight. And you can see, I almost didn't even touch the apex. And if your needle is perfect at the apex, there is no need even of filing it. And we just take a buffer and we smooth this out. Okay, so I can just perfect the shape. Blend that totally out. So first of all, like even when the nails grow, you cannot see the growth like And at this stage also, you can see some of the cuticles show up even more. So before I will be applying like the gel polish, I will tidy up the cuticles after I have filed the, the client's nails. So that will be my final touch. So on the beginning, I'm only removing what I have to really remove. And then the rest uh, I'm doing just before the gel polish uh, application or before the top coat in the case of the encapsulated product. Okay, nice and straight, go to the sides. And I'm always having the same filing technique. Uh, so this way the nails are kind of uniform. So they will match uh, as well. I can also check the length and this one is a tiny bit longer. So I could just touch that up with the length, blend that out. And I'm doing this tutorial as well, like on this model, because you guys asked me about the tutorials on the shorter nails and you asked me about the tutorials on the um, nails which got maybe more cuticles or they're a little bit biting. Uh, so I thought I will record that as well. So exactly the same. This nail actually came out really nice. That's it. I don't have to do anything else on it. So always the blending is the most important part. Okay, I'm just going to finish filing them. So this one needs to get buffed. And it looks like I'm pretty rough. Um, I'm actually will double check with the client. Is it sore? No. Okay, and just this one. So you can see I'm filing on my fingers and I'm trying to protect like her fingers, uh, walls. But I really want to get into those corners. Like I, I don't want to Let's to zoom it in. I don't want any place where you can see where the product is starting. You need to blend that out. Okay, I'm going to finish all of the snails and then we go into the baby boomer. Okay, so I have just buffed them all and now we are going to clean them well, dehydrate and do the baby boomer. And I show you the tip for a baby boomer as well. So I'm just cleaning the nails and sometimes like especially when we're working quick like we're talking about the salon work it may happen that you may get some ear bubble and let me search one. Let, oh I've got some here. Cool. Um, I hope you can see it. Those wee, there is a wee tiny air bubble and if we're working with the baby boomer what it will happen is the gel will get stuck in this air bubble and it will look really ugly. So what I'm doing is I'm applying the top coat quickly. So I have buffed the nails and now quickly I'm applying the top coat on the entire nails. And I'm going, to, because on the top coat we are not going to get any air bubbles. And then I can buff this top coat quickly and do the baby boomer without of any holes in it or without of like a gel stock in a... Uh, stuck in a pitting hole because that's how it is called how it is called properly so just apply the stop cut it seems to take longer because of it 
but it's not as long because sometimes if you get this air bubble it's so annoying like that the gel gets stuck in here that you are trying to fix it and you're fighting with it for so long um that's actually by this time you could just apply the top coat and buff it and you will get a much nicer results change okay so because now you don't have to shape the nail so basically you just kind of doing a couple scratches there I actually swapped the buffer And we also do some small design as well on them, so they're really nice and delicate nails. Okay, before the painting, I'm just going to tidy up the cuticles one more time because I'm not going to file it anymore. And now I'm feeling safe that I can do more aggressive cuticle work. have to do the same on this one but what I do is to save the time with the recording for you I've got a sponge in here and I'm going to cut this sponge just like this okay so that will be the sponge I will be using for a baby boomer nail form remove any fluff Paint on French gel. And what I'm always doing is I'm just putting a slap of it on the nails, just like this. And now the first layer, I'm going to kind of don't leave the product at all. Almost at all. No, almost nothing on the nails. Just very, very delicate. So this way we will get a nicer blending. They will look more beautiful. You can also hold clients' nails like this if you don't want to get it on the skin, especially if someone has a bite in nails, then you kind of more likely to touch the skin on the side. So I'm always kind of hold, uh, keeping the skin away. There is hardly any product visible. Very delicate. Next layer. So I don't have to cure it straight away. And the next layer, I'm more kind of dabbing. And if it would be short nails, that would be enough. Uh, they are kind of shorter side as well, but I'm going to apply another layer just so they're much nicer inside. And I show you once we get to that stage. Okay, and that's this layer kicked, and now I can do the second layer. So the second layer, you could either apply it at only just like at the very end of the nail, 
they get rid of the fluff and then just touch very gently to blend that out and then if you're happy with this look you could just leave it and cook it I'm usually really really fussy when it comes to the news so I might touch it the third time I also find that if I store this like this sponge is, is just absolutely perfect once it has some gel absorbed um, change oh the client just banged yeah. the hand oh no thanks <laughs> disaster So I'm just touching it up, cook it again. <laughs> Going so carefully now. It's okay. Now I'm just doing on the other hand. And we will also do some nice gentle design. I kind of like doing the nails, those kind of delicate wedding style. It is not for a wedding, it's just for everyday wear. <laughs> not planning to be married soon. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Change. And uh, yeah, what I'm going to do is like, just as I say, I'm really fussy. I'll just go with the third layer. Why not make it beautiful? So now I'm very carefully just kind of adding extra pigmentation to it. Change. This is almost to kind of blend everything out this layer now. But if I would have the sponge which uh, had absorbed the gel previously, then I would use only probably two layers. Cool, change the hands. And now we are going to use the D-liner. So that's the brush. I hope you will really like it that's blink so yeah we have been busy on the lockdown working with all those different things and I've got a tiny bit of the foil here and we are going to paint some kind of design so nothing overly too complicated just Couple whisper lipids. And I think it will be nice also if we add some kind of gem in here or something. Or a tiny bit of the glitter. No, no, don't put the hand down. That's just like a wee leaves.
By the way, I love this brush, it's so pretty. It took us a wee while to produce it, but I'm very happy with it. Actually, I'm just thinking, because she's quite heavy-handed with, with the nails. So just thinking, should we go for a gem or should we go for a bit of the glitter? Okay, change. I'm just going to quickly paint similar design in here. And if it's needed, we can easily move like a client's hands in different directions. This brush actually just paint on its own it can be so much quicker with the designs. Quite easy. Okay, and now I'm just going to paint that up in here as well. And I'm using the paint on French gel for that as well. Just a wee. White design. Okay, change the hands. And at this stage, I'm just going to apply a couple of the gems as well. I've got my wee box in here with the crystals and the things. And uh, I will be using the glue technique this time. So I want one crystal here, one crystal there. Just a little bit of blink. Mm. Just searching for the best places for these crystals. No. See, normally I don't let the clients put the fingers down this way because by accident you can easily touch it.
I have just put a little bit too much glue. Don't put as much as I did. So I will have to wait for this glue to dry now before applying the top coat. I could also use the base gel. And I don't like that. So what I'm usually doing, if I don't like something, and this is a good tip for you, don't be embarrassed, just take it off. Like I think it's, um, it's better to do that than send the clients with the stuff you don't like. So I'm just, I didn't like the fact that the gems was kind of like a funny order. So I'm just going to place a wee gem in here. And that's what sort this out. It just didn't look right. And I think clients would more appreciate it if you take something out rather than just send them home like this. Yeah, no I'm happy with it. And just a tiny one on the middle finger maybe. But I will think about it for later. Change the hands. So yes, I want just one in here, one in there and one in there. Guys, this is me working with the gloves. It's just a disaster. Like, I normally don't work with the gloves. Uh, unless I've got a cat or the client has a cat. Um, to protect me and them. So, this is pretty weird for me. And I think my biggest problem as a beginner nail technician when I started, I was really embarrassed if, I don't know, if I didn't get a perfect line by the first go or I don't know, if I didn't like something and I had to take it off. And then I learned that actually this is better. So that's a good tip for you guys. If you're not happy, just quickly wipe it off or take it off and just start again and feel confident about it, doing it. Yep, so... Um, so this way, like, I think you will just more impress the clients. They do really look like a wedding set. So now I'm just applying the top coat. And the top coat around those crystals, like, try to don't put the top coat on top of the crystals you want them to be nice and sparkly you can also see i've got this place here which i need to really fix because if it would be me it would really annoy me so what i'm going to do is take a little bit of the top coat and i just gently going to fade that out Can you see that we have fixed it, the place where we had the gem before? Just so the clients can be happy about the nice nails. And another one. Making sure I'm capping those free edge. I think it's pretty weird as well like um, I'm still not having 
my routine back yet like I think like not doing nails for such a long time is really getting on my organization skills like I have to run to pick up the forms or universal air bond or a glue inside and I'm just quickly applying on this one and I show you because um, the biggest change is like after we apply the cuticle oil on as well go around those crystals change change mm -hmm. yeah that's sometimes confusing sometimes if I apply a little bit more top coat because uh, I'm perfecting the shape with the top coat application as well so say if I might see like there is something at the free edge I would still use the top coat to kind of improve the shape and sometimes i have to put a little bit more top coat than i would normally use and that's mean i need to quickly freeze this gel uh, so it doesn't run and that's what i did then also clients usually look at me like oh my goodness what's she doing which just like even didn't finish painting all the snails um but yeah that's that's the reason behind it so i'm just going to cure them uh, both hands perfect and then I show you the final look after I clean them. Yeah, that's that's them. Finish with a bit of the sparkle. Uh, something quite delicate. And I hope you have really enjoyed it, watching this tutorial, like how to do the nails so the bit shorter clients uh, with the Biton uh, nails and uh, a bit more of the cuticle work. And that's how they came out. Yeah, big glittery hacks and bye for now.